Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, uh, talking about the Bucks and Giannis and Dame, and how, you know, Dame says that it's, you know, that the Bucks are Giannis' team. And to me, this is always such a silly conversation of going back and forth, back and forth, but also it's like, of course, this is Giannis's team, but then Giannis also came out and said, no, this is Dame's team, which is also just an absurd statement to make because it's clearly Giannis's team. But I think they're going about this such the wrong way of trying to both build each other up and to be like, this, this is us together. Um, so I'm really curious to see um, what like Nick and Brew have to say about this. So let's take a look and we'll break it down from there. We're under the post office. <laughs> All right, so despite some lulls in Milwaukee, the Bucks do have the fourth, fourth best odds, pardon me, for the title coming out of the All-Star break. Giannis, hoping to get it done again in Milwaukee, this time alongside Damian Lillard, who he thinks is now the face of the franchise. Here's what he said. I ride with Dame, like I've been saying this over and over again. This is his team. Down the stretch, he's going to get the ball. There's nothing else that we will do. I don't know how else to put it. I don't know what else to say. But at the end of the day, he has to believe it too. Brew, your reaction. I know what to say. What? I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. Look, I, I, I get wanting to make Dame feel at home and comfortable. And if you want to say this is our team, exactly. okay. If you want to say Dame's our closer, He's one of the greatest shooters. He's one of the greatest clutch shooters. That's fine. But his team, you're the guy, you're the best player on the team. You're the guy that's won two MVPs. You're the guy that's won a championship. You're the guy that's been in Milwaukee his whole career. This has gone too far. This is way overboard. I mean, there, and I, I'm not saying it's the end of the world, but the skeptics, the skeptics would say, okay, one. Is he setting up an excuse? Like, people are accusing Doc of putting out pre-excuses for when they yeah. get beat in the second round, right? Like, is, is he putting out a pre-excuse? Is, is Dame's team? Everything changed when, when Dame here is his team. Or, or is he saying he doesn't want the pressure of leading a team, you know, with all these so expectations? So why do you think he's saying? I think he's trying to be nice. I think, I think Dame clearly is their closer, even though it might be Middleton here or there, you know, but Dame's a closer and maybe that's what he meant. But I think he's trying to just be nice, but I just think it's gone too far and it, it makes you, we, we've seen him as the alpha, obviously Giannis, but it makes you feel like, dude, does he not want, like, so, why are you giving this team up? So I, LeBron wasn't going to give up his team until and, he was, you know, past his prime. And he, he right. And he still really has right. the, the, um, <laughs> I mean, LeBron was I, nice. You remember his rookie year. He came as his Ricky day. Okay, well, that's different. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But um, no. But, yeah. And when LeBron, when the best player on a team defers, it's usually not good. Thank you. That, that, so you agree with me? Oh, I agree with you. Okay. I, I just, I'm trying to understand why Giannis is saying it. Because Giannis doesn't think Dame's better than him. Gian, Giannis doesn't think anybody's better than him, which he shouldn't. Right. Giannis, Giannis legitimately might be the best player in the right. world. And if you are the ninth best player in the world, legitimately, you probably should think you're the best. So, you know what I mean? When you right. actually might be, and at worst, you're third. So I'm trying to figure out why he's saying because here's the thing. Giannis just keeps saying weird stuff, and I can't quite figure it out. So, and Wilds pointed out yesterday, the end-of-season press conference was weird, but I, I almost wrote it off in that, man – Guys, right after their season ends and they have to talk, we have a lot of instances of right. weird quotes. LeBron's like, hey, I'm still rich as <laughs> LeBron and you're still whack. He was right. That press conference was a, a tough <laughs> moment. Like, there, things are right, raw, right. whatever. Um, but then it was, he also, we didn't even talk about it on the show. The other day he was like, man, I've had four coaches in six months. Stuff's hard. It's like, buddy. We all kind of know, like, you had a hand in at least some of those coaching changes. And then the other quote that, you know, he talked about, you know, I, I love Drew, I miss Drew, but yep. now Dame. And now this part of it, I, I feel like Giannis is attempting to be 
the vocal leader. And I don't know that necessarily that is something that is coming easy to him right now. He's so, <clears throat> okay, this is the way I look at it. Is Giannis is not a traditional leader in the sense of a LeBron James, a Kobe Bryant, things of that nature. He is just not. Yes, he's the best player, but he is not that dude. He's really not. And I think Giannis lacks a tremendous amount of confidence. Look no further than his free throw shooting. You know, it's a whole song and dance still. And it's like, just shoot the ball, man. Just shoot the ball. Like, there's, you could just see it. There's still such a lack of confidence. And that's why he's not the closer. Think about how you could be Giannis and not the closer. There's so many instances where he doesn't want the ball at the end of the game. He doesn't want to go to the free throw line. He doesn't want the pressure, whatever it may be. He does not want that moment. Steph Curry wants that moment. Kevin Durant wants that moment. That's what makes them leaders, okay? That's what makes them the true alphas. Giannis is not. Giannis is the best player on the team and the reason why they you know won their championship and got the MVPs. But he's not the actual alpha, right? He's not the real true alpha. And again, I don't know if it's because he's international and I think that plays an actual legitimate part in it. Um, I think you just always connect differently with, you know, your teammates and your players and your family in that regard, because it's just different. Um, there's a reason why they still got his family members on there and stuff like that. It's just, it's just different. I mean, it really, really is. Anyone who's interacted and who has friends or family, you know, that are international, it's just different culturally. Okay. And so automatically Damian Lillard can connect with that locker room way more deeply within two minutes than Giannis ever could just for the sheer fact that they're born and raised in the same neighborhoods with the same culture similar parents similar upbringings similar tastes in music food all of that type of stuff they just they just know um and so and that's not to say that Giannis can't connect or that doesn't connect right I'm not saying Giannis can't you know can't lead or can't do those things but he leads in a different way that I think is not always the easiest thing. I love Kevin Durant, and I had a conversation with someone in the comments before about Kevin Durant leading in a different way, which I wholeheartedly believe. But it can sometimes be harder for someone like a Kevin Durant to succeed when you don't have a vocal leader like a Draymond Green or a culture setter like um, a Steph Curry. But the way how you can lead on the court, which is what KD I think does better than anyone, not better than anyone necessarily, but just one of the best, is you know you can trust him in that moment. In any moment on the court, no matter what's happening, you know, I just, as long as I get the ball to KD, everything's okay. We got a shot. That's leadership. And to me, that is such an overlooked form of leadership. And one of the best examples of this with KD was in the finals. And I forget if it was the first, his first win or the second win when he was getting mad that he wasn't, that he didn't get the ball in this moment. And he was like clapping real hard to be like, give me the ball. You know what I think? I think Steph had the ball and it's true. It's like, like, give me the ball. Like as KD has it, he's going to take care of it. He's going to handle it. If he gets trapped, he'll be able to get out of it. Like he can do anything that needs to be done in any given moment. And so you just feel better when you're on the court with someone like that. As a player, you feel better knowing, you know, KD, 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 got to look for KD is, you know, or if you don't have the ball and someone else has the ball and you just know, got to, got to get it to KD. Or as long as KD has the ball, you're like, all right, all right, KD's got the ball. All right, we got this. It's just, it's just, a, it's different. Giannis does not have that at all. Again, that's why he's not the closer. That's why he has given up the ball many times. That's why it takes him 45 minutes to shoot one free throw. You know, it, it's, a, it's a whole thing. Um, there's, and you can see the insecurity, and that's what they were kind of alluding to when he, when he gave his, um, you know, end of the season press conference where he said something about, you know, this year isn't a failure. Michael Jordan didn't fail when he didn't win, yada, yada, yada. And I get that quote. I really do. But it's still a weird thing. It's still a slightly weird thing to say, quite honestly. And I think that comes from a lack of confidence. You know, Giannis over the years before he was just this bright eyed, innocent 
genuine person. And as the years have gone on, he's gotten more, you know, divisive in a way. Not not in an aggressive way, but just, you know, fighting more, you know, talking more. He's just a different person than he was a few years ago. Um, as Colin Coward put it, you know, he's just become more Americanized, you know, and more bitter. And 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 that's okay in in a lot of ways. I mean, it really is. But it's just, I think Giannis is trying to be something that he's not, quite honestly. I think Giannis would have thrived, absolutely, with the Golden State Warriors. Take out KD and put Giannis. I think that's where Giannis thrives. Doesn't have to set up the culture. Doesn't have to be the one to take the last minute shot. And isn't the vocal leader. That's Draymond. That's Steph. And then Giannis is just free to do what Giannis does. That's who Giannis is at the core. Undeniably. And incredibly important. The Golden State Warriors need Kevin Durant to win those games. And they would have three-peated if KD didn't get injured. So it's not to say that those types of players aren't incredibly important. And if not at times, way more important than a Draymond Green or Steph Curry. Again, it's a team sport. You need everything. Michael Jordan needed Scottie Pippen. Needed Steve Kerr. You know, LeBron James needed uh, Dwayne Wade. Bosh. You know, Mario Chalmers even. Like, you need all of these things to happen to be able to win. And so, yes... Giannis is clearly just not that guy who can just, who's the vocal leader, the culture setter, the man on the court that everyone just knows as long as Giannis has it, we're okay. He doesn't have that. And so when you have a Damian Lillard who comes in, who is also a unique leader in his own right, um, he's vocal, but not the most vocal. And again, it's, it's a little bit harder when you're that smaller. He, to me, Damian Lillard um, leads in a way of, of, of confidence. Of, of more like, we're going to keep our emotions in check. We're going to just put in the work and do what needs to be done. And that's what he was definitely able to do in Portland. But I think that's a little bit harder of a, of a to be able to set up that culture that um, when you're going to a new team. Like, again, I think D- Damian Lillard and Steph Curry are similar in, in the way they lead to some degree of their of their culture and also like yeah i got the ball you know as long as you get me the ball like i can put up that last minute shot you know we we always have a chance i can always get us back into a game if need be but again if steph curry now went to a different team at this point in his career it's very hard to put a stamp on the locker room in that regard you know within that organization because one you're just not who you were in 2015 and two taking that culture that you built in say golden state or portland and now trying to bring it to milwaukee especially when you're no longer that dude as you were before it's just harder it's just harder um and it makes it you know much more difficult to lead in those circumstances um a 22 year old or 24 year old who's been playing with the bucks for the last couple years let's say and now damian lillard comes over that guy's not necessarily looking to Dame to be the leader. He's kind of like, I've been here longer than you, man. And like, you're not who you were before. Like, yeah, you still know he's that dude and can play, but it's just different. It's just a different level of respect. Now, flip that around. When Damian Lillard's in Portland for all those years, and now they acquire some new 24-year-old coming in, that guy's like, yes, Dame. Yes, Dame. Whatever you say, Dame. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Dame. Yeah, sure, sure. Whatever you say. Yes, Mr. Lillard. You know, yes, Steph Curry. It's, it's just different. It's different when it's your organization and you've been there for a while, you're established, and obviously if you're in your prime. But the moment you start to kind of waver from your prime and you move your home base, it's not the same level of respect. And that's why, without a doubt, it's Giannis's team. But Giannis doesn't want it. He's kind of saying the quiet part out loud is really the way how I interpret it. I don't see it as him trying to build up Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard doesn't need that. Damian Lillard knows exactly who he is. Damian Lillard has more confidence than probably anyone else in the NBA. So Damian Lillard doesn't need a confidence booster, self-esteem boost from um, Giannis. So I don't think that's what he's doing. I think Giannis is just, again, accidentally saying the quiet part out loud. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Um, I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, please let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And I would absolutely love to see you part of it. 
I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. Um, and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.